Hello, welcome to the F5 series on DNS. We're going to talk about DNS DDoS attacks. But in order to understand DNS denial of service attacks, often abbreviated to DDoS, you first have to understand how DNS works in general. And what does DNS stand for? DNS stands for Domain Name System. So we have our normal operation for DNS. So how does that work and why do we need the Domain Name System? Well, imagine that you are a client and you're, of course, have your ISP, Internet Service Provider. Well, inside your Internet Service Provider is something called a local DNS server. Local DNS server is a resolver. Why do we need a resolver? Because this client doesn't understand how to get to this web server, which has an IP address. It just knows that it wants to get to a site, www.company.com. So in order to find this number, it has to go through the domain name system. Domain name system is a lot like a phone book. In the phone book, you look up a, a name and you get a number, you get a phone number to go to. So the same idea is you get an IP address. So the client is going to ask its local resolver, LDNS, local DNS server, for the address for www.company.com. Now the Local DNS server is then going to have to resolve that name. We call it a resolver because it doesn't automatically know the phone number or the IP address for all of those different names. So first it has to figure out the address to get to, to in which server to ask. So sort of like finding out what page in the phone book. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to go to the root servers. And the root servers are achieved by having a hint list in the local DNS server. So it's going to go to the root server, and the root server is going to send back the information for the local DNS resolver to connect to the .com server. .com server contains all of the records for all of the DNS servers in the .com zone, which is the majority of the DNS servers on the internet. Of course, there's other servers for .org, for .net, for others, etc. So following this chain, the client to the local DNS server, local DNS server to the root server, back gets the address for the .com server. Now the local DNS server has the address for the server representing company.com. Now the local DNS server is actually able to ask for the record for the IP address of www.company.com. So it responds with the appropriate IP address. Now the local DNS server, which has been doing all of this work on behalf of the client, is able to package that information, send it back to the client. The client now knows how to get the web page for www.company.com using the IP address. This whole complicated system happens in a matter of milliseconds. And it uses a protocol we call UDP. The UDP protocol is stateless. So it's, it's that way because it's fast. What do I mean by stateless? I mean that there's no connection information it's just a query and a response. And that's very important when we start talking about denial of service attacks, and we'll get a little more into that detail as we go forward. One of the questions you might ask is how does the local DNS server indicate to the DNS server it's talking to how to get the response back to it? And that's something we call a source IP address. So when the local DNS server sends the information to the DNS server, it includes something called a source IP. And that source IP, think of it as a return address. And the return address allows the DNS server to send back the answer to the local DNS server. So that's, in essence, how the normal operation of DNS works.